Hello everybody, this video is on masses on a pulley on an inclined surface. Let's look at this example here. We have an 8 kilogram mass placed on a frictionless surface inclined at a 30 degree angle above the ground. So this angle here is 30 degrees. It is tied to a rope by a pulley to a 10 kilogram mass as shown. We want to find acceleration of the masses and also the magnitude of tension in the rope. With all of these questions that involve forces, we need to draw three body diagrams to identify the type of forces and also the directions. Let's start with the 10 kilogram mass because this is the easier one. We have a downward weight force that's equal to 10g, and we also have an upward tension force due to the rope. For the 8 kilogram mass, we also have a downward weight force that's called the 8g, a tension force in the rope along the length of the rope, so up the slope. And this tension force will be equal in magnitude to the tension force experienced by the 10 kilogram mass. This is because they are sharing the same rope system. We also have a normal force pointing away from the surface, perpendicular to the slope. And because it's a frictionless surface, we don't have friction in this scenario. We can analyze the forces of this two mass system by treating the 8 kilogram mass and the 10 kilogram mass as a single mass, that is, a combined mass of 18 kilograms. This is possible because they share the same rope and therefore they will experience the same acceleration. Let's define our directions. Let's say the downward direction for the 10 kilogram mass is positive and the upward direction is negative. This means if it was to move downward in the positive direction, then the 8 kilogram mass will move up the slope by the same distance. So this will be also be positive. This means that the downward direction down the slope for the 8 kilogram mass will be negative. The acceleration of the two masses will be the total net force divided by their total mass using Newton's second law. The net force acting on the 10 kilogram mass is easy to identify. It will be the weight force in the positive direction minus the tension force in the negative direction. The net force for the 8 kilogram mass along the axis of the slope is given by plus t, which is going in the positive direction, and one of the components of the weight force. The downward weight force vector can be resolved into two perpendicular components. This angle here is theta, which is 30 degrees. This gives us 8g cosine theta for the first component and 8g sine theta for the second component. We are more concerned about 8g sine theta because this vector is acting down the slope along the axis that we are interested in. So the net force for the 8 kilogram mass on the slope is plus t minus the downward weight force component that is 8g sine theta, which is 30 degrees. And this is all divided by the total mass of the two masses, that is 10 kilograms plus 8 kilograms. In the numerator, the two tension forces will balance out because they are equal in magnitude. So the top part becomes 10 times by 9.8 minus 8 times by 9.8 times by sine 30 degrees, divided by 18. The acceleration here is equal to 3.27 meters per second squared. The direction of acceleration depends on which mass you're referring to. Because it is a positive value, if you're referring to the 10 kilogram mass, this means that it will accelerate downward at 3.27 meters per second squared, as we defined the downward direction as positive earlier. If you're referring to the 8 kilogram mass, that means it will accelerate up the slope at 3.27 meters per second squared, because we defined this upward direction as positive before we started the question. Now that we found the acceleration, we can use this number and the force vectors acting on, acting on the 10 kilogram mass to find the magnitude of tension. The net force acting on the 10 kilogram mass is given by its mass times by the acceleration, and it also equals the sum of these two vectors, which is 10g minus tension. The mass here is 10 kilograms, and we found earlier that the acceleration is equal to 3.27 meters per second squared, and this equals to 10 times by 9.8 minus tension. We can then find tension by simply rearranging this equation. And the value of tension is 65.3 newtons. Now, let's look at an example where there's friction between the surface and the mass. We have a 5 kilogram mass resting on the surface inclined at an angle of 60 degrees. It is tied to a rope via pulley to a 15 gram mass as shown, and the coefficient of friction is 0.25. Again, 
we want to find the acceleration of the masses and also the magnitude of tension in the rope. Let's start by drawing three body diagrams for the two masses. For the 15 kilogram mass, we have a downward weight force and an upward tension force. For the five kilogram mass, we again have a downward weight force, 5G, a tension force running along the length of the rope upwards. We have a normal force that is perpendicular to the inclined surface. And this time, we actually have friction going down the slope that will resist the motion of the five kilogram mass. Again, we'll define the downward direction for the 15 kilogram mass as positive, upward as negative. This means the direction going up the slope for the five kilogram mass is positive, and the direction going down the slope is negative. The acceleration of the two masses combined can be calculated by finding the net force and dividing by their combined mass. So we are treating the two masses again as a single mass. The net force for the 15 kilogram mass is 15g minus the tension, and the net force for the 5 kilogram mass is the tension force going up the slope minus the friction force, and we also need to account for the component of weight force going down the slope. Now remember that's equal to 5g sine theta, where theta is the angle of inclination, and this is divided by the total mass, which is 15 kilograms plus 5. Now, I want to remind you that the friction force is related to the normal force. It equals to the coefficient of friction times by the normal force. The normal force in this instance actually equals to one of the components of the weight force, specifically the component that's also perpendicular to the inclined surface, which is 5g cosine theta. These two forces, that is n and 5g cosine theta, must be equal in magnitude because they must be balanced to give a net force of zero in this axis or direction. We know that the net force in this direction must be zero because the mass is not accelerating in that direction. It is only moving either upwards or down the slope. So the normal force here is also equal to 5g cosine theta. So the friction is equal to mu, which is the coefficient of friction times by 5g cosine theta we can substitute this equation into my fraction expression for acceleration. So my acceleration equals to 15g, the two tension will cancel out, minus the friction, which is mu 5g cosine theta, minus 5g sine theta. And this is divided by the total mass of 20 kilograms. So acceleration equals to 15 times by 9.8, minus the coefficient of friction, which is 0.25, times by 5 times by 9.8, cosine 60 degrees, minus 5 times by 9.8, sine 60 degrees, or divided by 20. This gives an acceleration value of 4.92 meters per second squared. This means the 15 kilogram mass is accelerating downward at 4.92 meters per second squared, and the 5 kilogram mass is accelerating up the slope also at 4.92 meters per second squared. Now that we found the acceleration, we can then use that to find the tension like we did in the previous example. We can do this by considering the net force acting on the 15 kilogram mass only. And this is given by its mass times by acceleration, and it's also equal to the sum of the weight force and the tension force. The mass is 15 kilograms, and the acceleration as we previously calculated is 4.92, and this is equal to 15 times by 9.8 minus the tension. So tension equals 15 times by 9.8 minus 15 times by 4.92, which gives a value of 73.2 newtons. This concludes the video of masses on pulleys on an inclined surface.